today I'm gonna give you four tips on how you can improve your videos in Luma Fusion. One of them is a workflow tip on how you can speed up the process of adding clips to your timeline and get them to match the music in an instant. Almost, almost. We're gonna dive deep into music, overlays and transitions and we're gonna go through the process of adding those to the timeline and see how big of a difference it does to your video when you add especially overlays. And of course, the music will have a huge impact. We're gonna use stems from Epidemic Sound to create today's sequence, which also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. And if this is the first time that you are here checking out one of my videos, I really appreciate that. And thanks for clicking on it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well so we don't miss out on any future videos. Now with that said, let's head over to the iPad and create a cinematic sequence. So let's move over to Epidemic Sound. This is what we're gonna to use to create the travel sequence uh, today. And uh, I found a song here, which uh, sounds like this. But I don't want to have that voice in there. The first... The first uh, vocals are okay, but when it comes to this uh, voice, which is, you know, lasting a little bit longer, I don't think that is a good fit for this track, and I want to remove it. I, I don't want to have it there. On Epidemic Sound, there is, for, for the songs that I use, most of the songs has two versions. One which has the vocal part, and one which has the instrumental part. Now, since I want to keep one of the uh, uh, voices here and want to remove the others, I can't really use the instrumental part because the or the instrumental version because that won't have any voices in it so if we search on this uh, track here as well uh, we can see there is no instrumental version of this so we would need to use uh, this track right here and it's it's a nice track and I like it but uh, I still want to remove those uh, those voices or especially the the longer one the, the ones that are at the beginning Meaning they sound good to me and I can also tweak them a little bit in in Luma Fusion but here's the thing when we download the stems we get all the different layers of music so we're not getting just one track which we throw at our timeline which is probably what you do in most cases you find a track wow this is awesome let's throw it at the timeline and start editing let's download all the stems here and what I'm gonna do is to just flip up Safari and drag it next to LumaFusion and then I can just go to the downloads on top right here and just drag that uh, zip folder over to Luma Fusion and Luma Fusion will extract it and I will get all the different stems. So if we see here on the bottom now, we have all the different uh, stems. We have the melody, instruments, bass and uh, drums. So now we can just drag these over to the timeline and we can see they stack in four and we also have the original track here as well. So if we listen to that, it sounds awesome and I really, really like it, but I don't want to have that additional or that second voice. The first part is okay, like I said, but I don't want to have that second part. And I also want to mix the music first, like if I need to add low pass filter or if I need to add something to the voices and so on first before I start adding the clips. And this is usually what I do. I do the music, then I do the clips. And then later, once the clips are done in position, I add my color grading, cinematic uh, bars and also transitions and overlays and we're gonna go through all of that in in this video as well we're gonna put together a cinematic sequence and i'm so excited to to do that it's, it's been a long time since i've done that as well so uh, let's just listen to the track here and uh, if we listen to the first part of the track we have these voices which i which i talked about 
and for this I kind of wanted to start a little bit slower because this track is kind of on point from the beginning with the voices and everything. So if we take a look at the waveform here, there is a dip here at the beginning. So this is when the when the first part of the voices uh, or the vocals are, are stopping. So this is a perfect spot for a cut to remove that first part. Now if we cut away the voice at the beginning here, we have a different vibe to the track. And this is a really nice way to customize the, the audio, having the same track as many others, but you manipulate it and customize it and cut it and adjust it and trim it and so on. So you have the same music as all others, but you will have a unique sound to it, which is really, really interesting if you think about it. So you can mix and, and trim this and, uh, and do the different things in your own style. Now remember the, the voice that I didn't want to have in my video, this voice right here. So this is uh, the one that we're going to remove. So we're going to go to the point, if we take a look at the beginning right before it starts, we can also see that dip in the waveform. So this is uh, where it starts, so that means we can cut away here at this part. So we're going to make a cut and then we're going to go to the end and just listen to, to where is the next spot to cut the clip so we can delete the middle portion which contains the vocals which which I don't want to have in this track. So if we cut it here and then delete that, what will that sound like? Perfect. So, okay, so now we've, we basically removed the part of the audio that I don't want to use. If we take a listen here now, we have removed the voice and... It sounds so much better, if you ask me. It sounds so much better. So this is what we're gonna, uh, what we're gonna keep it as, and uh, uh, we can also, if we take a look here, we can see that we have so much uh, sort of dead space in the middle here, uh, and uh, we can use this to trim down the track as well. So if we want it to be a few seconds shorter or a minute, depending on the track that you select, we can make a cut to the end here. And uh, so we have it something like this and then just drag it over to the next one. Now there will most likely be some trimming that you need to do uh, and cut away a few parts here and there to make this work. But once you have it at the exact spot, then it will sound really awesome. But you need to try to find those high notes or low notes in both both parts, the beginning and the end here, for those to blend in together a bit better. So once we have these blended together, it will sound like this. Now we can extend the track on the top and throw on uh, across the solve just to fade that in with the cut so it sounds a little bit more seamless and it's harder to detect the cut. And once we've done that, our track is actually sounding pretty good. Now let's move over to the next part here which is the fun part and that's going to be adding videos to the music. So moving over to some clips here, we're just going to drag a bunch of clips over to the timeline and just play through here and as you can see on the waveforms, once we have a couple of uh, clips added to the timeline here, if we take a look at the waveforms of the tracks, you can see that it's now easier to see the spikes in the audio track compared to the one track layer which we also applied which is the finished mix. If we take a look at that you can see it's quite difficult to find the spikes in the waveform because it's so compact and that's because all the different stems are put together creating this one track. But if we move over to the uh, layers which we have here, the different stems, you can now see how easy it is to find the different spikes, which is usually where you want to have your cuts. So I can follow this track here until the end and just keep on following the uh, spikes here and cut the clips to that spike to have the visuals matching the beat of the music. So let's just speed forward here. So we got more clips on our timeline here. And uh, as you can see here on the touch bar, everything is being cut to the beat of the music. And once everything is cut, we have a finished sequence, a finished raw sequence where we have the music track and we also have all the clips that we want to have our, on our timeline and all of the clips are now matching the music. It's uh, just raw, there is nothing applied to it, it's only the cut to the beat of the music. 
Now, one of the key things that you need to add to your videos, especially if you make travel videos or, you know, videos in general should have some sort of overlays, light leaks and other cinematic overlays. If you make a travel sequence, light leaks works for any, any type of video, basically. But we also have some film overlays and some film grain that we can use for travel sequences. So let's first start with the basic Thing to make this a little bit more cinematic and that is to add a cinematic bar however this is uh, individual so if you don't like using cinematic bars you don't use cinematic bars I like to use them so that's why I have one here on the timeline so now that we have applied the cinematic bars uh, let's take a look at the beginning of the sequence So the sequence looks good, but there's still something that I want to add to spice it up and make the beginning a whole lot more cinematic and look better visually. So that is overlays and I want to use some film overlays. So that's what we're going to use. So importing some film overlays and the blending mode can vary depending on the overlay that you choose. Sometimes it's screen, sometimes it's lighten, other times it's overlay and darken. But for this one, it's uh, screen. So that's what we're going to use. And uh, you can see now this creates a really nice visual to our cinematic video now i want to trim this down because this is way too long and i only want to use a small portion of it as a transition into the next clip so i'm going to place it here at the end of the first clip and trim it down also going to find the point in the overlay here which i like the best and then make sure that this is placed properly over the cut between the two clips the first and the second clip so i think we need to add another one here and for this one i need to add the blend mode overlay because it's a bit too bright adding the screen won't do much to this the screen is only taking away the darker spots that's why we want to do an overlay for uh, an overlay like this yeah anyway so moving this over to overlay and then we can take a look at the beginning here looks good but maybe it's not a perfect fit for the beginning of the sequence. So we're going to trim it down and then we're going to place it underneath the current overlay, which we placed on the timeline earlier. And if we take a look now, we can see that the first overlay we applied is, is being used as a transition sort of over to the next overlay. And this is actually a very good fit for this clip. So we're going to keep it like that and just trim it down. And I also want to have an ending to this overlay. I don't want it to just suddenly stop uh, when the next clip is uh, is coming, the third clip. So we're going to add an additional overlay here, which we can use a light leak, which we can use as a transition from this clip and this overlay over to the next clip, the third clip. So we're going to do the same thing. Just use the blend mode screen and add some cross dissolves just to fade out the end of it. And here you can see how that is impacting impacting the ending of this overlay and the video in general, making it so much better than just having the raw cut. Now, there is so many other things that you can add as well. So let's add another overlay here, which we can add at the end just to make it a little bit more interesting here. And it's the same method. Just trim it down and then add some uh, I cross the solve at the end to fade it out so we have a more smooth ending to the overlay so it just doesn't suddenly stop within a clip. And now that we have these applied, let's take a look at the beginning of our sequence. Now we can also add different effects to the different clips here. So for this, we're just going to add a zoom in. And at the end of the clip, we're going to add a zoom out. And for the next clip again, we are also going to add a zoom out. So that gives us a transition between the end of this first clip and the next one. So it zooms out uh, from the first clip and then continues to, to zoom out from the next clip. 
Now, like I said, there's many ways that you can create a custom transition. So well, let's take these two clips here, for example. So we're going to do a cut of 10 frames at the end of the first one and then at the beginning of the second one. And when each clip has 10 frames, we can go into the first one and we can create our easy, simple whip transition. And we're going to do this with the, the frame and fit section. So we're going to make a keyframe at the beginning and we're going to make a keyframe at the end and on the end keyframe here since this is the first clip on the end keyframe we're just going to stretch out the position x and just move it to either side so this one we're going to move to the left side and once we've done this, we have the first part of our transition. Now we need to do this to the end part as well. So we're going to go into the next clip, which is 10 frames and do the same thing. But here we're going to do it the opposite way. We're going to make the two keyframes, but the beginning keyframe here is going to have the adjustments. So now we will have a transition that took us a few seconds to create, which is also looking pretty clean. Now another way of spicing up a raw cut is to just add a flash transition. You can use the built-in flash transition, which you can find within LumaFusion, or you can create your own unique one by using a color preset. So what we're going to do here is to select the uh, last clip. Uh, we're just going to do this the, the other way around. So we start with the last clip, then just make a keyframe at the beginning beginning of that and go a couple of frames depending on how long you want it to last and make another keyframe and then go back to the first one. On the first keyframe you can adjust the brightness and the levels and you're done. So now we're going to do this to the first clip as well so we're going to go into edit on that and then go to the end and make a keyframe and then go the amount of frames we want to the left and make our second keyframe and here we're going to do the changes on the last keyframe so we're just going to take the brightness and levels and push those up until the screen is getting brighter and we now have a flash transition in between two clips. Now, another way that you can spice up your videos as well is if you have the Creators Bundle version 2. This contains the Pro Transitions for LumaFusion and you can just copy these from the project timeline and paste them in your current project and copy the keyframes from the transition over to your clips. And once you've done this, you have a perfectly smooth transition that you can use to spice up your videos. So now that we've finished up most of the basic things to improve our videos, so like cinematic bars, overlays, light leaks, we have color grading applied, we have manipulated and adjusted and mixed and customized the, the music track, and we also added transitions. Let's take a look at the beginning of this sequence. Now there we had a very basic sequence to begin with which we turned into something a bit more professional by adding some overlays and some transitions, light leaks and some uh, uh, film rolls. Also the music had a really big impact. Remember the stems that we put on our timeline in the beginning? By actually following the peaks of those layers, or especially the one track which had the most spikes to it, made it really easy to cut all the clips together before we started adding the overlays and so on. So keep that in mind. If you can use stems, then I would highly recommend that you use stems and put those together. And then you can render out one single file of audio. It will be a video file with the audio, but you can just delete the video and then keep the audio because you know, anyway. So if you want to check out Epidemic Sound and get 30 days free trial, there is a link down in the description below. And with that said, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.